I, I need you to fix my marriage. I need you to give me a better job. I, I, I need you to fix this problem in my life. Or Lord, if you if you would save me, uh, I mean, I'll follow you if you just get me off this cross. He saw salvation as, hey, his, it was his hope, man. It was, it was all he had left. He was coming to the end of his life. He had moments to live. And he's considering all these things. He's hey, I got what's coming to me. My only hope now is in Jesus Christ. He was fleeing to Christ. He wasn't running. I mean, he wasn't putting any conditions on it. There was a guy in, um, in uh, the state of Missouri that just robbed a car. And uh, after talking to the owner of the car, man, they started to get on the radio and they started publicizing hey, we need to look for this car. There's some guy that just ripped this thing off. Here's the description of the car. And they even went so far to get on the radio. And come to find out, they weren't so interested in just finding the car. But what had happened was the gal, the gal had a real bad rat problem, and she had all these crackers, and they were all poisonous crackers. She had put poison in there, and she was on her way home to put these all out by her house to kill these rats. And they, they looked like normal crackers, and she was afraid that the robber was going to eat the crackers and die. And so they were putting all these, you know, uh, the, all this radio stuff and, and publicizing, hey, we, we need to find this car. We need to find this guy so he doesn't eat this stuff and die. And uh, he was avoiding everybody. He didn't know the situation. He didn't know the, the harm that he was in. He was just trying to stay out of the public eye and, and he was doing everything he can to try to escape. And that's how it is sometimes with people. You, you think you're trying to run from God and, and try to get out from all this judgment, but no, you're running away from the very hand that can help you and bring you life. Mm. Don't put any conditions on it. Christ doesn't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. He simply wants to save you because of the situation that you're in. You're without hope mm -hmm. in this world. A sinner. And if you die in that situation, you die and you go right to hell and He doesn't want to see you go to hell. So He offers you a way of escape. There's no room for conditions. Lord, I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll trust you, I'll, I'll, I'll follow you if, you if you fix this or if you help me in this area. No, God doesn't play those games. He doesn't owe you anything. He's simply trying to save your soul. You need to see your situation for what it is and just cry out to Him, Lord. I don't know how much longer I have. I look to you for my salvation, my only hope. It's like that same scenario with that guy that's going in the stream of water. He's going to go over the over the brink of the falls, and and and, and he says, "Hey, uh, is that a nylon rope? Because I'm only going to grab that if that's a nylon rope, right?" And and you had to have bought that at Sears. If you got one at Walmart, I'm not even interested. How ridiculous that would be if he puts all these conditions. And listen, I want a guy somewhere between 20 and 25 because I want to make sure that that thing holds, you know. I want a young strapping guy. No, 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 that's a woman. No, get her off that rope, off that rope. No, no, I'm not even going to grab it. How ridiculous that is when we put conditions upon the salvation that Jesus Christ offers. you got to fix this in my life, fix this in my life. I'll tell you what. Uh, he doesn't guarantee that anything's going to be fixed. But I'll tell you what, He gives you His Word that He's going to be there as you go through these things. Many of the problems that we have, if not all the problems we have, are simply a result of us being sinners and making mistakes. But Jesus Christ, He will help us through those things. He'll be that friend that sticketh closer and brother. He will guide you. He'll direct you. He'll give you wisdom. And uh, He doesn't guarantee that all that stuff will be fixed. But I'll tell you what, your soul and eternity will be fixed forever. Amen. That'll, be, that'll be a blessing to know where we're going to go. And then finally, the last point here is, I just, I look at Jesus Christ, and what did He get out of seeing this guy get saved? He says in verse 43, and Jesus said, Verily, verily, I send you today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. This guy had nothing to offer him. Nothing. He's stuck on a cross. You can barely give him any praise. What does he have to offer God? Nothing. But he's not looking for that. Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. This is why he came. To take a guy that was so completely helpless to do anything. 
at the end of his life and save a soul. That's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's not looking to see what you have to offer him. He just simply wants to save him. This morning, if if you're just like one of these guys, these thief on the cross, cross and you've sinned, you, you know that you've sinned, you, you know that you get a reward for doing the, the, the sins that you do, and, and that hell is going to be that eternity uh, that, that will be for you if you don't turn to Jesus Christ. Um, he extends to you His arms of love, and He desires for you to call upon Him for salvation. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He didn't say, take me off this cross today. No, he doesn't guarantee all your problems are going to be fixed, but I'll tell you what, he'll be a friend. You can enter into a relationship with him that is worth everything in this world. This morning I was reading, What shall profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm -hmm. The most valuable thing that you have is not your home, your vehicle, your land, or your jobs or even your loved ones. The most valuable thing you have is your soul. That's going to go on for all eternity. And there's nothing, nothing that you should give up for that soul. Jesus Christ wants to save your soul. And uh, if you're not saved this morning, we desire uh, for you to trust Jesus Christ. We will give you a time where you can come and, and during the song you can come and ask Jesus to save you or uh, if you want to talk to me afterwards, I'd be happy to talk to you about it what salvation is all about. But don't walk out of here lost, knowing that you're a sinner without Christ. And you go out. We're, we're not guaranteed another day or another month or another year. We're not guaranteed anything. And so uh, I hope that today you consider trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. He wants to. He's not looking for anything in return. Just love Him back and be grateful for His salvation. So, all right. Two thieves, the believing thief, both had the equal opportunity. Why did one trust Christ and one walk away rejecting? It was their perspective on who Christ was, on who they were, and how they looked at salvation. They saw Christ as the Son of God. They saw themselves as a sinner, and they saw salvation as a free gift, and they're not putting a condition on it. And Jesus Christ was saying, hey, I know you can't offer me anything, but I want to save you. A wretch like you, hung up here on a cross, I want to save your soul.